Hello everyone, this is Miss Cavalier back today to teach you a little bit more about some volcanoes that we've been learning about. Um, the name of our lesson today is This Girl is on Fire. Okay, because we're going to be learning about the ring of fire and how volcanic eruptions affect our environment. So stay tuned. Um, and you can go ahead and pull up on your own computer under Google Documents this opener that we have about volcanoes. Okay, it says opening. And uh, before I started, just know that all documents, uh, whether they're PowerPoint, Word, um, direct links, videos, anything like that, it's all preloaded onto Google Classroom. So if there's anything that you want to see that was shared today, or if you, um, you know, want to do any extra work, it's all online under Google Classroom. So here we go. Um, just for everyone's watching this, the students will be able to pull it up themselves. I'm using Skype and it has a little bit of a lag on the video, so I'm just gonna play a couple seconds and then we'll go on with our lesson, okay? Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I love it, I think it's awesome. It uh, has great graphics and the music is phenomenal. So I hope that helped pull you in, get you excited. So we'll continue our lesson on volcanoes today. All right, we're going to go over our I can statements. You should be familiar with these, but it just kind of describes uh, what we'll be doing, what will be expected of you as a student, and what you will be exposed to today. So here we go. I can statements. This is what we're doing for uh, this lesson. I can draw and label an example of one thing I learned today about volcanoes, and we're going to do that in our journals. I can write about the effects volcanic eruptions have on our environment. These and facts from research, so also in our journal. I can research the question, how do volcanic eruptions affect our environment using several sources, such as books, articles, videos. I can develop and use a map to describe where the ring of fire is located. I can predict what will happen before and after using an image of lava. I can create a table using digital technology to explain the effects volcanic eruptions have on our environment. Even though it may look like a lot, they kind of all go together. You will be doing some research after this lesson of uh, effects that uh, volcanoes have on our environment, our environment. So pay close attention to today's lesson. I think you're going to be quite interested. It won't be much of a problem. Okay, so Ms. Cavalier is going to go through this PowerPoint with you. It's going to kind of be a refresher for um, what we previously learned about volcanoes, parts of them, what causes them to erupt, um, all that good stuff. And so, uh, for this lesson, we'll focus just a little bit more on the effects that come out of volcanoes erupting. All right, volcanic eruptions and hazards. Hazards um, are the effects that come out of them. Here we go map of Mount St. Helen near, near Spokane, Washington, um, erupted May 18th, 1980, had an ash fallout within the U.S. So if you look over here, uh, even though it happened in the northwest part of the United States, you can see where all this part of the U.S. was affected by the ash fallout and how thick it was. So the closer it is here in red, you're going to see two to five inches, a half to two inches, and then uh, somewhere around a half an inch all the way over the U.S. Okay, so it goes, it travels pretty far and affects a wide range of areas. Uh, what is a volcano? So once again, a little bit of review. A mountain uh, having a crater where uh, magma uh, rock fragments and all that uh, erupt from the Earth's crust. It includes the surrounding cone of erupted material. So if you look at this uh, diagram, you're going to see down here's the magma chamber in the center of the Earth, way down below. Okay, and as it becomes more buoyant or more pressure, it rises up to the top, uh, it erupts out the top, then becoming lava. So it's magma under the Earth, it's lava once it reaches the surface. Uh, here is the vent. Uh, you have the cone, which is uh, the part above ground, shape of a cone, makes sense, the conduit below. All right. What causes this magma to escape the mantle and come out? Subduction zone volcanoes, and this is all review, so I'll just kind of go through it quickly. Divergent zone volcanoes and hotspots. All right. 
hot spot location, um, lots of volcano act, um, activity for a long period of time. You can see the Hawaiian Island chains uh, have hot spots. It's pointing right here to the top where the hot spot is. Okay, and here's a volcano erupting over here, quite intense. Uh, tectonic plate moves over the hot spots, right? And it forms new volcanoes. <clears throat> so looking at the diagram, you can see how it's pretty easy for them to just start forming, all right? Forms a chain of them. How wide do volcanoes erupt? Magma is buoyant. So fun fact for you. This Cavalier here is a certified scuba diver and I uh, dive down in the ocean in some springs and places and you have to to get your certification you have to know a good bit about buoyancy and buoyancy is just kind of where you float on the top so if you're buoyant you know you're going to go to the top of the surface and you're dense you're going to go down below well when this magma becomes buoyant it rises to the crust just like a scuba diver under the water when you air up your bcd you're going to rise to the top uh, through the crust to erupt on the surface okay when that magma reaches the surface surface depending on the amount of gas it has is how much it erupts, how easily it erupts, right? So a little bit of gas, it's gonna, just going to erupt a little bit, maybe just trickle out, and a lot of gas. It's going to be a huge explosion, okay? How and why do volcanoes erupt? Large amounts of gas form an explosive eruption, just like we talked about. Small amounts will form an effusive eruption. So effusive, what I was talking about, where it just kind of trickles out a little bit. Nothing impressive, but still causes damage. Types of volcanoes, active volcano, erupting volcano, dormant volcano, extinct volcano. All right, they, they are exactly what they sound like. Active, can erupt really at any time. Erupting is it's already erupting, lava spewing out. Dormant, if you think about like a bear in the winter time that is dormant, he's sleeping. Um, but it's predicted to erupt again, just like a bear is predicted to wake up and go out and eat and do its thing again. A dormant volcano is expected to eventually erupt. An extinct volcano had erupted for 10,000 years. Scientists don't expect it to. Not quite sure why, but they just don't expect them to. Okay, why do they stop erupting? Trap gases are no longer enough pressure to drive that magma out. Okay, so it's just not enough gas and not enough pressure to push it out. So they'll just stay kind of dormant. Uh, heat is lost, so that magma cools and it's no longer buoyant. So why not? Magma is really, really hot and liquidy. It's going to become more buoyant and go up to the top. But if it's not hot, it starts to cool off. It's going to stay down below. No need to erupt. Okay, so heat has a lot to do with it. Pacific Ring of Fire. Here we have a map of the Pacific Ring of Fire. You can see it down here. Over here is Australia. Um, let's see. You got Russia over here. You got Alaska uh, working down to the United States and Chile over here. Um, so you can see the Ring of Fire works this way, this way. And all these little red dots are volcanoes along the Ring of Fire. Um, so, and here's some pictures of some volcanoes. Ring of Fire, 452 volcanoes on the Ring of Fire, home to over 75% of the world's active and dormant volcanoes, okay? So not all volcanoes are found on the Ring of Fire, but a large majority are. Uh, Ring of Fire is a result of plate tectonics and the movement and collisions of these plates, right? So as they move, as they collide, as they rub and do all that, um, they cause volcanoes, which uh, can't be found a lot of times in the Ring of Fire. Here's a good map, my favorite map of the Ring of Fire. Okay, um, same as the other one. You got Australia here, you got Russia up here, Philippine Islands, Russia, Alaska. Oh, fun fact for you. This Cavalier lived in Alaska for a few years. Um, Although I don't, I did not see any volcanoes while we were there, and I didn't see any that were, or that definitely didn't see any that were erupting. But boy, did we have earthquakes! 
Okay. They could, and they were almost daily. They could be just little tiny ones. You barely feel it. You have to think, was that an earthquake? All the way up to some pretty big earthquakes. Um, first year I moved there, I was teaching first grade in the middle of my lesson, standing up and all of a sudden the ground starts to do this, starts to wave. And I'm, you know, freaking out. My kids are calm as can be. They are so used to it. Not Miss Cavalier. I didn't know what to do, but we figured it out and we were fine. So, uh, so going along Alaska, all the way down to the United States, here we go, uh, and down to uh, Africa. So this is the ring of fire, if you follow along that course. Here we go. Explosive eruptions. Um, catastrophic. They kill people, animals, uh, damage land, wildlife, things like that. So these are all effects. So when we talk later on about effects from volcanoes erupting, these are some of the effects. Three products come from these eruptions. You have asphalt, pyroclastic flow, which we'll talk more about, pyroclastic surge. Pictures could say a thousand words. This one could say probably about a million. Look at all of that ash and dust and steam. And this is a pyroclastic flow. Very, very dangerous. Feel sorry for this guy in the sheep right here. Wouldn't want to be him. Nope, not unless he's a volcanologist who studies volcanoes, would I ever want to be that close? So I don't think I'd want to be that close even if I was. But. Uh, so here's some pictures of some direct impact from pyroclastic flow. You can see all the ash and steam and dust, um, the damage that it's done, destruction. This kind of looks like a before picture, maybe after. <sighs> yeah, lots and lots of damage. Definitely, definitely affects our environment. Direct impact. Here's a burial from pyroclastic flow. You can see the... Um, all the lava kind of settling in this poor church right here. It's not going to be used anymore. This house is almost completely covered. You can just see how the ash and the dust and pyroclastic flow just damage this town. Um, in this picture, you can see where it's burned the trees. Trees are not even alive anymore. So it definitely damages our wildlife, our plants, our forestry, things like that. Um, so this hot volcanic activity actually melts snow and ice. Um, which can cause uh, torrents, flooding. So if the city didn't have enough damage from the volcano erupting, it melts the snow and ice and actually could cause flooding and cause even more damage. So Catastrophic is what we would call that, severe damage. Uh, you can see the ridges and grooves that show which way the mass of hot, dusty air was moving. So the air was kind of pushing this to one side, and you can see the streets that it's left. So even the air can cause damage. Pyroclastic fall, so ash load. So the ashes that fall, no, this is not snow. It looks like snow, it's not snow. It's ashes, actually, from the eruption. It can cause roofs to collapse, power lines to be destroyed, kills plants we talked about like trees and things like that contaminates water supplies so you can't drink the water for a while respiratory hazard which is like breathing issues uh, for humans and animals you can't breathe in that ash and dust effusive eruptions outpourings of lava on the ground so you can see where this lava came through destroyed these vehicles okay destroys the land around it Lava flow, not just explosive, that's dangerous, but this uh, this lava can come even after, and it can be in excess of 200 degrees Celsius, which is pretty doggone hot, and you can tell because it's like glowing and hot and molten in this picture, right? Um, but the good thing about lava is that even though it's extremely hot and dangerous, it actually moves very slow, so if animals or people need to get out of the way they usually have enough time to uh, let's see okay well that's the end of our powerpoints about um, effects on our environment from volcanic eruptions um, if I was teaching this lesson I have a lot more activities to go on but um, anyways I wanted to say thank you for allowing me to do this lesson and taking the time to view it and I hope to see you soon or hear from you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.